In this part of the program, we'll see how some of these switches can be used to provide protection against overcurrents. Overcurrents are typically caused by overloads and faults on a distribution feeder circuit. Overcurrents can be temporary, for instance, those caused by lightning surges or tree branches touching conductors, or sustained, like those that are caused by defective equipment. By using a combination of reclosers, sectionalizers, and cutouts, along with substation circuit breakers, a system can be built that will open and then reclose after a temporary overcurrent. The same system can also isolate a sustained overcurrent by remaining open. A system that can respond to both temporary and sustained faults and keep the maximum number of customers energized while preventing or limiting damage is said to be a system of coordinated protection. We'll use this simplified drawing of a distribution system to see how one type of protection can work. Keep in mind that while the equipment demonstrated in this program is typical, the equipment used on your distribution system may vary according to manufacturer, specific use, or your company's protection scheme. This is a circuit breaker located in the substation, a feeder line, and two lateral circuits. The first is an overhead circuit connected to the feeder through a sectionalizer. The other is a URD loop system of pad-mounted transformers with each end of the loop connected to the overhead feeder through a fused cutout switch. This URD system is called an open loop because the primary circuit is open at one transformer connection. And finally, a recloser is used to sectionalize the feeder. For our purposes, a closed circuit breaker, recloser, or sectionalizer is indicated by the color red and a line connecting the circuit. An open unit is indicated by green and a line across the circuit. De-energized lines are dark and energized lines are light. Overcurrents resulting from a fault are indicated by a red X. To see how each component works in the system, we'll remove all of the parts of the drawing except the circuit breaker and the feeder line. Now we can build our system of coordinated protection one step at a time. In this simplified system, if the current level rises above the set limits of the circuit breaker, creating an overcurrent, the circuit breaker opens, de-energizing the entire feeder. Once the problem is repaired and the circuit breaker is closed, the feeder is back in service. Now, some circuit breakers are equipped with relays that can be set to open, delay, and close several times before remaining open or locking out. If a fault occurs, the circuit breaker opens and waits a preset length of time before attempting to close again. If the fault clears, the breaker will close and remain closed. If the fault is not cleared, the breaker will open again and continue to cycle the preset number of times until it eventually locks out, de-energizing the feeder. Now, let's add the lateral circuits. Even if the fault has occurred on one of the lateral circuits without additional protective devices between the feeder and the lateral circuits, any fault will affect the whole feeder system. Sectionalizers and fuse cutouts can be used to section off part of a circuit so that the fault occurring beyond the device can be isolated allowing the rest of the circuit to remain energized. 